All right, so there are no right or wrong ways to build a guitar. There are no rules. That's what this whole community is based on. The idea that we can do whatever we want. It's the custom guitar builders of the world that dictate the trajectory of progress in which all the other big brands eventually follow. It's all the innovations that we do that end up influencing the market. And once that gets the attention of the big dogs, they follow suit. So I just wanna open with this idea that there's no right or wrong way to build a guitar, that we can do whatever we want. So today, we're gonna to be talking about compound radiuses or as I'm going to refer to them moving forward as conical radiuses. Now, there's no right or wrong way to do a compound radius. And I'm not gonna go into the details because everything that I learned about compound radiuses or conical radiuses, I learned from YouTube and the internet. So all that information's out there and you just have to search for it. I will talk about a few key points that I think are important that a lot of other builders are missing or at least that I'm not seeing in other builders' videos. So the idea of a conical radius is that a fretboard is not a cylinder, it's a cone. And we need a few data points to build that cone properly. One of those data points is the E to E length at the nut. Now when I say E to E, I mean the string E to E from the center diameter of the low E to the center diameter of the high E. Now, this is traditionally a 42 millimeter width nut, but I'm not interested in that 42 millimeter number. I'm interested in the string E to the string E, center to center. That's the first data point we need. That's the first section of the cone that we're building. Now, the next section of the cone we need, the wider section, is going to be at the last fret, or the 12th fret, or the bridge. Remember, we're building a cone, and even if we took the E to E width at the 12th fret, that gives us a cone. And that cone, that little cone, extends this way to the nexus point where the strings meet in a point. But it also keeps extending, getting wider, till we meet the last fret and eventually the bridge. So it's this second data point, whether you're using the 12th, the last fret, or the bridge, that we need to build the cone from that first data point at the nut. So this next point is where things start to diverge a little bit from geometrically proper cones. And what I mean by that is that a lot of guitar builders arbitrarily choose two numbers for their radius. They might say something along the lines of, I want a nine inch radius towards the nut and maybe a 12 inch towards the heel. Those are two arbitrary numbers. Now, Technically, those two numbers are all you need to build a cone, but that cone you're building with a 9 and a 12 may not actually match your fretboard or the bridge. In order to figure out the proper two numbers, you need the proper data points and at least one of those numbers. And there are a lot of formulas on the internet, a lot of calculators on the internet that can help you do that. I built one based on the Stumac formulas, just a spreadsheet. So I'll quickly show you that. So I'm gonna hop onto the computer and I'll show you the spreadsheet that I built based on the formulas that are published on the Stumac website. Okay, so you can grab all of these formulas from the Stumac website. And this is simply just basic algebra. And all we need to do is plot all these formulas into a spreadsheet, which I've already done. So this is the actual set of data points that I need to build my conical radius for the neck that I'm currently building. I told you that we need two specific data points in particular, right? And that's going to be the E to E width at the 12th fret and the E to E width at the nut. So for me, I am measuring the E to E and mine came out to 1.31 inches. And you can measure this a number of ways. I am in CAD, so I'm able to actually see my strings, I can model them out, and I can get this very precise measurement. Now, I'm going to do the same thing for the width at the 12th fret. And this is at 1.68 inches. So this is all in inches. Now I need the scale length, right? And the scale length, this is going to be um, the variable t, and this is the distance from the nut to the 12th fret. So all I'm doing is cutting my scale length in half. 
So since this is a multi-scale, I'm just using 26, which is the longest scale in my multi-scale, to get 13 inches, which is half of 26. Now, the next thing I need is one of the radius numbers. So in this case, at the nut, I want my radius to be 16 inches. So I have plotted that in. So the last thing we need is this variable D, which is the distance from the nut to wherever you want the next radius to be. And you just measure that from the nut. So in this case, this brings me uh, to 19.5. This is arbitrary, right? So as soon as I populate all these data points, then I'm getting my variable RD, which is the radius at D, that arbitrary point, which is the 24th fret. And that spits out a value of 22.779. So now I have the two proper radii. I have 16, which I arbitrarily, you know, came up with, and then it spits out the proper last radius, which is 22.779. Now you can work these formulas out backwards too. So if you knew you wanted like um, a 20 inch radius at the 24th fret, or like a 16 at the 24th fret, it can give you the opposite number. So it can tell you what this one should be at the nut. But in this case, I'm just using this. So this is my neck, but let's just do, let's say another neck. So in this case, let's say we want the radius at the nut to be something um, a little bit more traditional, like let's just say 10. Okay, there you go. So notice with these same other data points, right? 24 fret here, it spits out the value of 14.237 inch radius at the 24th fret. So this builds a proper cone with a 10 inch radius at the nut and a 14.237 inch radius at the 24th fret based on these lengths and these widths. I hope that makes a lot of sense. This is just basic math. This is math. This is how I build them. So there's a lot of folks that might believe that all these values are extremely marginal, right? That we just don't have the proper tolerances to build a proper conical neck in the real world. And they might be right. This all might be for nothing, right? At the end of the day, when you basically fret your conical neck and level it and set it up, all this may not even matter. And all those people that state that actually might be correct. But I work with math and I work in CAD. And why wouldn't I do this, right? It doesn't take any effort on my part at all to plot in a few numbers in the spreadsheet. And the CNC doesn't care, right? Whether it's building a uniform single radius fretboard or a conical compound radius, it doesn't care. It takes the same amount of time. So why wouldn't I do this? Why wouldn't I be following proper geometry and math? Okay, that's all I have to say about that. So no right or wrong way to build these things. This is the way I do it. This is the way I'm always gonna do it, simply because I work in CAD. And if things aren't perfect in CAD, you see them. Things break in CAD if they're not perfect. Luckily, in the real world, we can kind of do whatever we want. The wood is very forgiving. We can compensate with the fret leveling. There's a lot of things we can do during setup to really make a guitar play amazing, regardless if it's geometrically proper or not. And that's where I wanted to go with this video. Just a quick little talk about conical radiuses. So on that note, let's take a look at this neck close up.
I just wanted to show what this looks like before we do the contour. So I've seen a lot of people do this type of inlay work and I've always been fascinated by how efficient it is because it's essentially doing two things, right? It's being the face dots as well as the side dots. So I decided on epoxy simply because it allows me to route the actual inlay pocket and just fill it, wait a day, and then cut it. Really what's happening is the fretboard is going to be cut like that. So you're going to get these half hexagons as the face markers, and the edge of the board will also have that turquoise side dot. But I wanted to show this because I know it's hard to imagine. When you see the whole pocket, the face of this fretboard will not have hexagons. They will be half hexagons, almost like little arrows, or points. So for these higher frets, since they are much, much smaller, you have to remember that an end mill, let's say the one I'm using is an eighth inch end mill. So this makes it very soft. It's not a very sharp hexagon. They are very soft points. So you can really see through this. So this is going to be how translucent they are in the light. You can see to the bottom of the wood there. And I intentionally spilled this over because the next operation we're gonna do is a facing operation. And that facing operation is gonna take off about maybe a millimeter. So all this will be cleaned up very nicely. And then we'll put a radius on it. But before we do that, we need to do the contour. So the contour is gonna come across right through here, cut through there and cut all that. All right, let's get to it. This came out pretty good. So I have the radius complete, compound radius, and it's nice and smooth. Everything came out really nice. I mentioned earlier that these aren't as sharp as they could be because they're made with a 1 8 inch end mill. So I think in the future, if I do this again, I'll make this with either 1 16th or 1 32nd inch end mill to get these corners, these tips, really sharp. This is a good shot where you can see the side dot inlay portion here. So that's a nice, really long rectangle in between those frets for side dots. So this is a wormhole. I don't know what else to call it. I'm calling them wormholes, but they're burrows in the wood. They go all the way through. And I filled most of them up with epoxy, clear epoxy. So yeah, I'm gonna fill up this burrow with some wood dust and super glue. I'll match it from here. I don't have any naphtha I ran out, so I'll just use the alcohol, it's no big deal. I have a process for building side dots on the CNC, and it's quite a few steps. So I want to try to reduce those steps. And so I noticed there's a bunch of guys who are building the inlays where the inlay is also not just the face inlay, but the side dot inlay. And I thought that was just such a clever idea. I wanted to try it. I don't think I'm ready to build those inlays with wood. So I did this epoxy method and here it is. It's essentially a hexagon, but cut in half. And you can see the side dot inlays 
at the side and there are also the face inlays in the front. I always wanna try something new when I'm building a guitar, something I haven't done before. And this definitely counts as something new. All right, so thanks for listening to my rant about conical fretboards. Thanks for watching and take it easy.